Cells have a whole bunch of machinery that is what you might call suicide machinery that causes them to, in a very clean way called apoptosis, actually just disintegrate and the detritus is got rid of by other cells. Now, apoptosis is something that we need to have. It actually takes place a great deal during our initial early life, both prenatally and during development, so as to model some of our tissues. And it also has a very important role during adulthood in various places, especially, for example, in the immune system. After an infection is overcome, most of the cells that proliferated in order to do that need to go away. So apoptosis, cell death, cell suicide, is a very important component of the body. But it doesn't really relate to organismal death at all. In fact, if anything, it can be considered as part of our survival strategy, that cells die when it's good for the body, for those cells to die, the body can last longer. And there is a concept called antagonistic pleiotropy in gerontology and actually brought more broadly in biology, which says that certain genes and genetic pathways may be good in some circumstances and bad in other circumstances. And if the circumstances where they are good are more common or are more selected for than the circumstances in which they're bad, then you end up having something that hangs around, even though it's bad. There are probably cases of antagonistic pleiotropy in ageing, where something is good at an early age and not so good at a late age. Um, in fact, probably the best example is that cancer is a disease essentially caused by the trade-off between the necessity for cells to be able to divide when we need them to, and the necessity for cells not to divide when they mutate, so they lose control over when they divide. Um, some people would call that an, an example of antagonistic pleiotropy, some people would not, but that's really more of a semantic thing. So there's been a debate over the years as to whether there is some program that is if you like, the organismal equivalent of apoptosis, something that actually causes the whole body to die for the good of the species. And certainly for many, many years, starting in the 1880s or so, it was believed by most biologists that that was the case. But since the 1950s or so, people have overwhelmingly felt that it's not the case and that the reason why we age is simply because evolution has not taken the trouble to stop us aging, not because evolution actually wants us to age. <clears throat> So, you know, in that sense, I don't think there's really much controversy now. There are still a few people out there trying to claim that we really do have some kind of ageing programme that causes us to die. Um, but most people don't think there is. However, let's remember that even if there is, that doesn't mean that medicine cannot defeat ageing. Far from it. In fact, it's rather the opposite. If there were a programme in the body that causes us to age and die then all we would need to do to postpone the diseases and disabilities of old age by perhaps a great deal would be to disable that program. And disabling something in biology is a hell of a lot easier than building something new. So that would actually be incredibly good news. Unfortunately, it seems not to be true. The whole concept of telomere shortening causing cells not to be able to divide more than a certain number of times has been oversimplified and distorted just astronomically much in the media and in the general uh, consciousness. To be honest, a quite a number of scientists, or at least scientific commentators, have contributed to that confusion. But really there's never been any confusion among the people working in the field. Everyone has appreciated that there is a massive difference, a complete difference, between the ageing of cells, especially the ageing of cells in cell culture in the laboratory, and the ageing of the organism. The cells that are most often used to do experiments on telomere shortening and such like in the laboratory are cells called fibroblasts, which don't normally divide very much in the body. They divide like crazy when they are stimulated to do so. The sort of thing that stimulates them to do so is if there's a wound and they proliferate to close the wound. But that is something that only happens occasionally to a given cell, a given fibroblast. So in a whole lifetime, a typical fibroblast won't have to divide very often. Whereas in cell culture, you're sort of tricking these cells into thinking that they're in an infinite-sized wound that they can't close. 
And so they just divide and divide and divide and divide and eventually they can't do it anymore. It's not physiological at all. Now that's not to say that telomere shortening has nothing to do with aging. There is reason to believe that it may have something to do with it, especially because there are certain cases where cells have to divide a lot and if they are allowed to divide too freely, that may make it easier for them to accidentally become cancerous. So it is a trade-off. But I think we have, nevertheless, a respectable chance of being able to, 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 to find a best case, uh, to find a way through this trade-off, so that cells can divide when we need them to, or can be replaced when they can't divide, but will not divide when we don't want them to. At the moment, there's a lot of work going on in mice to address both sides of the cell division and telomere shortening question. There's a lot of work going on in trying to develop stem cell therapies. Of course, that's also true in humans, but we're further along in mice, of course. And stem cell therapies, especially for the rapidly renewing tissues like the blood or the skin or the gut, are exactly what we would need in order to replace cells that have become sluggish or unable to divide stem cells um, because of telomere shortening. So that's one thing that's part of this. Another part is simply to make it harder for cancers to become immortal, to actually turn on mechanisms for elongating their telomeres. And we're looking at ways to make that harder. Other people are also looking at other ways. Drugs, for example, that inhibit the enzyme telomerase, which is the way that most cancers actually achieve their immortality. So uh, there's a lot going on in this area, both in mice and eventually in humans.